the 1927 Madras session of the Congress was memorable. The goal of the Indian people to be complete independence was passed. The Congress expressed its indignation at the non-inclusion of Indians in the Simon Commission, which was coming to inquire into the working of the representative institutions in India and suggest constitutional reform. The Congress decided to boycott its visit. All political parties, including the Muslim League, Hindu Mahasabha, and several eminent leaders demanded boycott of the Commission. Gandhiji said, I hope the boycott will show the nation's strength and purpose. The freedom struggle was gaining momentum. The Indian people were moving towards their goal of complete independence, Purna Swaraj. When the Simon Commission landed in Bombay on the 3rd of February, 1928, the city observed a complete hartan. Police resorted to repressive measures. In the Central Assembly, Lala Lakshpatrai moved a resolution to convey the country's lack of confidence in the Parliamentary Commission, which had been appointed to recast the Constitution of India. The resolution was supported by Motilal Nehru, Mamad Ali Jina, and Malvia. It was carried by 68 to 62 votes. Annie Besson said that India will accept nothing less than Dominion status. British officials received the commission with garlands and bouquets and the people of India greeted them with boycott and banner. Go back, Simon. On the 3rd of October, 1928, the Lion of Punjab, Lala Lakpatrai, was leading a demonstration against the Simon Commission at Lahore Railway Station. The police assaulted the peaceful demonstrators and Lalaji was hit on the chest. Lakpatrai succumbed to his injuries on the 17th of November, 1928. With the death of Lalaji, Boycott of Simon Commission was intensified. In Lucknow, Jawaharlal Nehru and Govind Ballab Pant were beaten by the police. At Lahore, Bhagat Singh killed Saunders, the police officer responsible for Lakshmatrai's death. According to a telegram sent to the Viceroy, the youth responsible for the killing escaped through the DAV College and their identity was not established. Meanwhile, the peasantry of Bardoli was carrying on a grim struggle against unjust increase in land revenue. The Bardoli Satyagra, led by Sardar Vallabhai Patel, was a triumph for the Indian farmers. The working class movement was gaining strength. 150,000 workers of textile mills of Bombay went on strike. Production was paralyzed. The Secretary of State, Lord Birkenhead, had said in the House of Lords that since no constitution framed by the British could be acceptable to the Indians, 
let them put forward their own suggestions. The Indian leaders took up the challenge and set up a committee under the chairmanship of Motilal Nehru to lay down the principles of a constitution for India which would be acceptable to all. The committee submitted its report on the 10th of August 1928 when the Simon Commission was still in India. It was considered and adopted by the All-Party Conference at Lucknow in August the same year. The conference was in favour of Dominion status. Subhas Chandra Bose and Jawaharlal Nehru opposed it as they wanted nothing short of complete independence. The constitution provided for a federal system of government with residuary powers vested in the centre. It was agreed that there shall be a joint mixed voters throughout India for the House of Representatives and provincial legislatures. There shall be no reservation of seats for the House of Representatives except for Muslims in provinces where they are in a minority and for non-Muslims in the Northwest Frontier Province. Many Muslim leaders, Dr. M. A. Sari, Sir Ali Imam, the Raja of Mahmudabad, and others approved of the draft constitution. The Muslim League and a section of the Khilafat Committee, led by Mamad Ali Jina, refused to accept the communal settlement, and its 14-point amendment demanded that Muslims should have one-third representation at the centre. In Punjab and Bengal, Muslims should have representation on population basis and the residuary powers should be vested in the provinces and not in the centre. When this amendment was lost, Gina left the convention in protest. The freedom struggle continued unaffected. Motilal Nehru was elected the president of the 1928 session of the Congress to be held at Calcutta. Subhash Bose wrote to him, Dear Panditji, I cannot tell you how disappointed the whole of Bengal will feel if for any reason you decline the Congress presidency. The people of Calcutta gave a massive ovation to the presidential procession of Motilal Nehru. Subhash Chandra Bose was the commander of the Congress Volunteer Force. He said, Give me blood, and I promise you freedom. Condemning the Simon Commission's visit, Motilal Nehru asked, How would any Englishman like his house to be broken into and his guests treated with a sound thrashing? How would an Englishman like to be imprisoned in his own house? In conclusion, he said, Our destination is freedom, the form and extent of which will depend on the time and the circumstances under which it comes. When Nehru's report on the constitution came up for discussion, moderate leaders wanted to settle for dominion status. But young congressmen led by Jawaharlal Nehru and Subhash Chandra Bose demanded complete independence with immediate effect. Crisis was averted by a compromise resolution moved by Gandhiji which said, if the constitution recommended by the Congress is not accepted by the British government in its entirety on or before 31st December 1929, the Congress would organize a campaign of non-violent, non-cooperation. The Congress also asked the rulers of princely states to introduce responsible government based on representative institutions. A committee on boycott of foreign clothes was set up under Gandhi. C. Rajagoparachari headed the Prohibition Committee and also edited a quarterly magazine, Prohibition. Jamnalal Bajaj was Secretary of Anti-Untouchability Committee. Jamnalal who opened the doors of Lakshmi Narayan Temple at Varda to the scheduled caste, the Harijan, as Gandhiji used to call them affectionately. Many well-known temples also opened their doors to them. They were admitted to national schools and colleges. The scheduled castes were allowed to draw drinking water from the common well. During the 20s, the Communist Party was trying to establish its foothold in India. Many important members of the party 
were convicted in what was called the Kanpur conspiracy case. The party played a noticeable role in organizing workers' strikes during 1928 and 1929. 31 leading members of the party, including some Englishmen, were arrested in March 1929. They were tried at Neerak on the charge of conspiracy against the King Emperor. Prominent among them were S. A. Dange, Muzaffar Ahmed, S. S. Mirajkar, Ghate, Kishori Lal Ghosh, and T. C. Joshi. They were defended by a galaxy of lawyers, including Pandit Jawaharlal Nehru and K. N. Kadji. The prosecution failed to establish that they had links with Moscow. Twenty-seven of the accused were sentenced to various terms of imprisonment. Even after the departure of the Simon Commission, the non-cooperation movement continued. Burning of foreign clothes, picketing of liquor shops, boycott of British institutions. Gandhiji was arrested in Calcutta and fined one rupee. Eminent leaders like Maulana Azad M.A. Ansari and others asked the Muslims not to scramble for communal rights but to join in the fight for the freedom of India. On the 8th of April 1929, when the Central Assembly was discussing the public safety bill, Bhagat Singh and Batukeshwar Dutt tossed two bombs into the hall. They shouted, Inkalam, Zindaba, and scattered leaflets from the visitors' gallery. One legislator was seriously injured. The two revolutionaries were arrested and taken to Lahore. Bhagat Singh was charged cheated for sedition and implicated in the murder of Saunders. In what came to be known as the Lahore conspiracy case, Bhagat Singh was tried along with Sukhdev, Raj Guru and Jatin Das. They protested against inhuman treatment of political prisoners and went on hunger strike. Jatin Das went on indefinite hunger strike, but the Raj showed little concern for a precious human life. Jatin Das died on the 64th day of his fast. The body of Jatin Das was taken to Calcutta, where Subhash Chandra Bose personally supervised his funeral. The success of the non-violent, non-cooperation movement provoked the authorities to launch repressive measures. Volunteers collecting funds for the defense of under-trial prisoners were arrested and beaten by the police. Many political prisoners and workers' representatives were transported to Andaman and Nicobar Islands after summary trial. The government soon realized that repressive laws could not keep the people in bondage forever. The British Prime Minister was contemplating calling Indian representatives to a roundtable conference. Lord Irwin invited Motilal Nehru and Gandhiji for a meeting on the 23rd of December 1929 to discuss the political situation in the country. The Viceroy was returning from a tour of South India. As his train was entering Delhi, a bomb was thrown. Lord Irwin had a narrow escape. A badly shaken Viceroy kept his appointment with Gandhiji, Motilal Nehru, Jina, Safru and Vithalbhai Patel. Gandhiji wanted to know whether the round table conference would be held to prepare a draft constitution for grant of dominion status to India 
including the right to secede from the Empire. Since the Viceroy was unable to give any assurance, the Congress decided not to attend the Round Table Conference. Gandhiji declared himself for independence and said, I have burnt my boat. One year of grace given by the Calcutta Congress for grant of dominion status to India was drawing to a close. The 1929 session of the Congress was held on the banks of the River Ravi at Lahore. At Gandhiji's suggestion, 40-year-old Jawaharlal Nehru was elected as the youngest ever president of the Congress. A proud father, Motilal, handed over the mantle of office of the president to his son. Gandhiji described Jawaharlal Nehru as purest truthful, truthful beyond suspicion, and said, the nation is safe in his hands. At midnight on December 31st, 1929, as the new year dawned, Jawaharlal Nehru unfurled the flag of independence. The vast gathering was joined by Khan Abdul Ghaffar Khan with a large contingent of his Khudai Khidmatdar. The Congress passed a resolution demanding Purna Swaraj, complete independence. The resolution further asked all congressmen to boycott central and provincial legislatures and asked the sitting congressmen to resign their seats. The All India Congress Committee was authorized to launch civil disobedience including the no tax campaign. The Congress asked the people of India to observe January 26, 1930 as the independence day and take a pledge which said we believe that it is the inalienable right of the Indian people as of any other people to have freedom and to enjoy the fruits of their toil and have the necessities of life so that they may have full opportunities of growth. We therefore hereby solemnly resolve to carry out the instructions issued by the Congress from time to time for the purpose of establishing Purna Swaraj. The young Congress president electrified the people into action. The nation was astir, preparing to observe January 26, 1930 as the Independence Day to achieve Purna Swaraj, complete independence. In the Central Assembly, Lala Lakshpatrai moved a resolution to convey the country's lack of confidence in the Parliamentary Commission, which had been appointed to recast the Constitution of India. The resolution was supported by Motilal Nehru, Mamad Ali Jina, and Malvia. It was carried by 68 to 62 votes. Annie Besson said that India will accept nothing less Police resorted to repressive measures. The Congress decided to boycott its visit. 
all political parties, including the Muslim League, Hindu Mahasabha, and several eminent leaders, demanded boycott of the commission. Gandhiji said, I hope the boycott will show the nation's strength and purpose. The freedom struggle was gaining momentum. The Indian people were moving towards their goal of complete independence, Purna Swaraj. When the Simon Commission landed in Bombay on the 3rd of February, 1928, the city observed a complete hartan. The 1927 Madras session of the Congress was memorable. The goal of the Indian people to be complete independence was passed. The Congress expressed its indignation at the non-inclusion of Indians in the Simon Commission, which was coming to inquire into the working of the representative institutions in India and suggest constitutional reforms. 